So it was my birthday yesterday and I got this, which is a Fitbit Alta, and I'm hoping it's going to turn me into like a new active gym going person because apparently it records absolutely everything, but I just think it looks a bit ugly on my hand, what do you think? And also why isn't the time always there? It drives me crazy, I have to like twist my hand or like tap it. <laughs> anyway, why am I putting off the start of this video? Because it's on the Harbour Process, Equilibria, reversible reactions which is a pretty stinky topic and everyone seems to hate it that I teach it to but you guys have to learn it so I'm going to try to do my best in order to teach it you properly <laughs> right remember with reversible reactions it's reactions where reactants react together to produce products and then the products break apart to produce the reactants again and which react together to produce the products so it goes round and round and round and it's a pretty crappy situation for um, manufacturers to be in because at the end of the day they want to make as much um, product as possible so they can make as much money as possible and the last thing they want is those products breaking down to produce the reactants again. So we need to try and alter the conditions to cause as much as many of the products to be produced as possible. I hope this isn't reversing because of the way the camera is. Just remember the products is obviously on the right hand side of the equation. Right, so in a dynamic equilibrium, um, what's happening is that both the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate. Dynamic means that both reactions are occurring, because it's the opposite of static, which means that nothing would be changing. And equilibrium means that, effectively, the concentrations of both the reactants and the products remain the same. Now, have you, do you understand the words exothermic and endothermic? It's really crucial that you do in order to understand what's going on in this topic. Remember, an exothermic reaction is something which gives out heat. So what you will feel is that the reaction chamber will get hotter and examples of that are obviously combustion, which is burning, and also neutralisation reactions, that's when you have an acid and alkali which react together to produce a salt plus water. So, those are exothermic reactions give out heat and if you look at the delta H, which will be given by the equation given in the reaction, you'll see that it's delta H negative meaning that heat energy is given off. It's really important that you recognise delta H negative as being exothermic, otherwise you can't even begin to get these marks in these questions. When we now look at endothermic reactions, remember these take in heat energy, and what you'll actually feel is that the whole reaction chamber will get cooler. You must remember that exothermic, it gets hot, endothermic, it gets cool. And the delta H sign this time is positive. So if you see it, on the question, you see a delta H positive, it's endothermic and it's getting colder. I'm sounding really violent with this, but it's so important that you understand this and that you get it. Okay, so we see a very special arrow given in reversible reactions. It's like a two-ended arrow saying that it goes forwards and then it goes back. When we are looking, oh, endothermic reactions by the way, a reaction which um, takes in heat energy is an example of that is Thermal decomposition, there it is, because remember things like calcium carbonate when you apply heat break apart. So endothermic reaction, if you're asked for an example, is thermal decomposition. Right, let's take the Harbour process then. So remember the Harbour process is the manufacture of ammonia, which is NH3. What we do in the Harbour process is we get nitrogen gas from the air, we get hydrogen from water, I think it's from water, and then you react them together to produce ammonia. But because it's a reversible reaction, you find that the ammonia breaks apart to produce the um, nitrogen and the hydrogen again, so it's fairly annoying. And what you need to do is encourage the most amount of ammonia to be made. It's really important now that I point out the difference between yield and rate of reaction. Yield is literally the amount that you make, so you want a higher yield as possible, okay? Rate of reaction just means how quickly the reaction is occurring, and it's to do with collision theory. It's to do with how quickly those particles collide and come together. However, even if they collide, they may not necessarily produce the product. It may just be a rubbish reaction and they may just like bump off of each other again. So it's important that you realise that a high rate of reaction doesn't necessarily mean that there'll be a high yield. Right, so in ammonia we can see from this equation that the forward reaction is exothermic. That means it gives out a lot of heat energy and the whole thing gets hot. What you need to understand with these reactions is that any change you make to the reaction conditions will be opposed i.e. the reaction will try to remove that change you've added. So if you add heat, the reaction is going to favour either the forward or reverse reaction, but whichever one reduces the amount of heat, i.e. makes it cooler. So if we look at the Harbour process as our example, we can see that the forward reaction is exothermic, i.e. it gets hot. So how do we favour that forward reaction? Well, we decrease the temperature in order to produce a high yield. So 
we lower the temperature, we say the equilibrium position moves to the right. Why? Because the forward reaction is exothermic, and that's how you need to word these answers. However, from collision theory, we know that low temperatures are a bad idea because particles won't collide very often or very much or with much kinetic energy at all. So they'll just be drifting around. So we say that the reaction conditions in the manufacture of ammonia are compromised because actually we, use, we need to use the temperature, which both gives a high enough yield to make it worthwhile, while, but also gives a high enough rate of reaction to cause the nitrogen and the hydrogen to collide enough. So we need to use 450 degrees Celsius as our compromised temperature, which, let's be honest, doesn't sound very low at all, even though I just said a low temperature produces a high yield. You're going to have to say 450 degrees is used as the compromise because it creates a high enough temperature for high rate of reaction, but low enough temperature to produce a high yield, seeing as the forward reaction is exothermic. Next, we need to look at pressure, and this time, remember pressure is only associated with ga gaseous reactions, so when gases react together, and what you need to do here is count the number of moles of gas on each side of the equation. So, remember, it would have been really helpful if I'd actually remember to look up the equation for ammonia. Darn it! Let me think. Okay, so I now have the equation. So remember, you need to count the numbers, which is the big numbers in front of each compound or element, to work out the number of moles of gas on each side of the equation. So if we look, look at the left-hand side of the Harbour process equation, the ammonia manufacture equation, we can see that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen. So if you add those two numbers together, you see that there are four moles of gas on the left-hand side. However, on the right-hand side, it's two NH3, so there are two moles. So it's four moles left-hand side, two moles right-hand side. Please let me have said those numbers right. So which side has a fewer number of moles of gas? Well, the right-hand side. So, if I am trying to encourage the right-hand side, remember, whatever I change the reaction ch change, I make to the reaction chamber, the reaction will try to oppose the change. So, if there are fewer moles on the right-hand side, what I need to do is increase the pressure, because if I increase the pressure, the reaction will try to decrease the pressure, and therefore it needs to favour the side which produces the fewer number of moles of gas, because that side will be at a lower pressure. I hope you understand that. I've increased the pressure, it favours the side which will decrease the pressure, so therefore it favours the forward reaction, so the position of the equilibria will move to the right. So we can see in the Harbour process, to get a high yield of ammonia, we need to use as high pressure as possible. However, again, we need to say that the pressure conditions are a compromise. We use actually a pressure of 200 atmospheres, which, is, which isn't actually that high. The reason why we have to use um, a compromised pressure is because very high pressures are very expensive and they are very dangerous so we need to lower it slightly even if that is um, going to affect the yield of ammonia. So we use 450 degrees Celsius, 200 atmospheres and we also add an iron catalyst. Right, why do we add an iron catalyst? Remember a catalyst speeds up the rate of reaction without being used up. So based on that definition we know that adding the catalyst will increase the rate of reaction. The problem is it increases the rate of reaction of both the forward and reverse reactions. It has no effect on yield. So make sure you don't, you don't actually accidentally start talking about yield if they ask you about a catalyst. It has no effect on yield whatsoever. Right, I think I'm basically done. That was kind of, yeah, I don't know. Remember that ammonia is super important because it contains lots of nitrogen, so it's used in things like fertilisers. Um, such as ammonium sulfate, that's a compound that you will find in some fertilisers. I'm going to add the questions now, and um, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, because sometimes I just feel like I'm talking to myself, and um, it's really nice when you guys talk to me, so... Anyway, I'll try and not have such a massive gap between videos next time, and I'll see you soon. Bye! I'm just going to put into practice what I was talking about just now, so we're going to look at this IGCSC question, and it's going to be question 10. I should probably have gone there already to save time, stop wasting your time. Sorry about that. Right, question 10. Where are you? So, the Harbour process is used to convert nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia. Which raw material is the source of nitrogen? Okay, that's the air. B. The hydrogen for this process is obtained using reactions 1 and 2. Reaction 1, reaction 2. Predict what will happen to the equilibrium position in reaction 1 when the pressure is increased. Give a reason for your prediction. Okay, so let's hone in on reaction 1. Because we're talking about pressure, we're looking at the number of moles of gas on each side. So in reaction 1, on the reactant side, there are two moles of gas. 
And on the product side, there are four moles of gas. And remember, all I've done is added the big numbers together at the start of each element and compound. So we can see that there were more moles on the right-hand side. So if I increase the pressure, remember, based on what we've learned about equilibria, what the reaction will try to do is to decrease the pressure. So it will therefore favour the reverse reaction, as that has fewer moles of gas. So in terms of our answer, we're going to write prediction. The equilibrium position will move to the left. And the reason for that is because that results in a decrease in the number of moles of gas. Part 2. Predict what will happen to the equilibrium position in reaction 2 when the temperature is increased. Give a reason for your prediction. Okay, looking at reaction 2 then, and we're talking about temperature. So now I need to look at the delta H symbol, and I can see that it's delta H equals minus 42. So that tells me automatically that it's exothermic. So we know that the forward reaction results in a lot of heat being released. Therefore, if I increase the temperature, I'm going to favour the reverse reaction because obviously I'm going to try and lower the temperature. So you need to say that the equilibrium position moves to the left. And that's because you can say here, because the forward reaction is exothermic, or you can give the converse argument and say that the reverse reaction is endothermic. Predict what will happen to the rate of reaction 1 when the pressure and temperature are increased. Okay, don't get confused. Don't start looking at this and being like, oh, I don't know. Because it's mentioning rate of reaction, we can ignore everything we've learned about equilibrium. We can just talk about it in terms of collision theory. And just remember, if you increase both the pressure and the temperature, the particles collide more you have increased frequency of collisions. So in both cases here, you're going to say that the rate of reaction will increase. Good. OK, I'm going to find an AQA question now. So here's an AQA question on the same topic. So question six, the flow diagram shows the harbour process. In the harbour process, ammonia is produced from nitrogen and hydrogen. OK, there's a diagram. 6A, which raw material is nitrogen obtained from? Gosh, a similar question. Remember, that's the air. Part B, what is the purpose of pipe X? Okay, so I can see that pipe X is going from the condenser back to the reactor. So actually what pipe X is doing is it's recycling all the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen. So you need to say recycled, recycling, and you need to say all the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen for the second mark. And that's because obviously this reaction is reversible. So we know that the products often break apart to produce the reactants again, and we don't want to waste those, hence why pipe X exists. Gosh, that's hard to say. C, balance the chemical equation below for the production of ammonia. Right, you'll need to do a number three in front of hydrogen and a number two in front of ammonia. Check out my video on balancing equations if you're not happy with why I said that. 60, a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is used in the reactor. The reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen is reversible. The forward reaction is exothermic. Explain why a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature for, this, for the harbour process. So they've helpfully given you a lot of information there. Um, the fact that the forward reaction is exothermic tells us that a high yield is favoured by a low temperature. So you need to say here that you need to use a lower temperature in order to create a high yield. Um, but you also need to say that the fact is you need to have a high enough temperature in order to create a large enough rate of reaction, which is why the compromise of 450 degrees is used. 6e, an energy level diagram for the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen is shown below. How does the energy level diagram show that this reaction is exothermic? So just use the, even if you don't know this off by heart, if you haven't learned it, just use the diagram to help you. Remember on the left hand side you have the reactants, the right horizontal line is the product, so you can say here, see here that the products have less energy than the reactants, and that's all you need to say. So literally say what you see. In the harbour process, iron is used as a catalyst. Draw a line on the energy level diagram to show the effect of adding a catalyst. Remember, a catalyst offers an alternative reaction pathway with low activation energy. And all that means is you need to just draw a, another line on this graph following the exact shape of the first line, but make sure that the curve, so the peak of the line, is lower than the line drawn here. And then finally, I'm going to take another AQA question, and it's going to be question 5. And again, on the harbour process, so... In 1909, Fritz Haber invented a process to produce ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. Complete and balance the chemical equation. Okay, like the other question then, but this time they haven't given you the formula of ammonia. Well, that's NH3, and the number you need to add to balance that is a 2, so you're going to write 2 NH3. 5B, figure 5 shows how the equilibrium yield of ammonia changes with pressure at different temperatures. Use the information in figure 5 to complete the sentence. The temperature on the graph that gives the highest yield of ammonia is... Okay, so I'm looking for the graph that produces the highest yield. I'm looking for the line which produces the highest yield, and I can see that that's 200 degrees Celsius. 
5B part 2, the temperature used in the Harbour process for the production of ammonia is 450 degrees. Why is the temperature much lower than 450 degrees not used in the Harbour process? And you need to say here because the rate of reaction would be too slow. 5B part 3. Draw a ring around the pressure that gives the highest yield of ammonia. And that's 200 atmospheres because remember you need to learn these compromised reaction conditions for the for the manufacture of ammonia, so that was 450 degrees Celsius, 200 atmospheres and an iron catalyst. 5B part 4. The pressure used in the harbour process for the production of ammonia is 200 atmospheres. Why is the pressure lower than 200 atmospheres not used for the harbour process? And that's because the it would result in too low a yield. Okay, so remember that high, the higher the pressure in the harbour process, the higher the yield. So if we go lower than that, then you're going to find that you're not going to produce a high enough yield, but literally just right here, lower yield. 5C, explain how ammonia is separated from unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen in the harbour process. Okay, what we do is we cool the ammonia to cause it to condense and turn it back into a liquid, and then we can recycle the unreacted gases. So for your two marks, just say that everything is cooled and that the ammonia liquefies. Okay, hope you found that helpful. Very long video, I know, but I'm hoping that it is going to be of some help to you and I'll see you soon. Bye!